yeah, there's a lot of flies that get on you when you get out in the field, isn't there? Yeah, a lot more than in the barn area where the hornets have their territory. If you look at these horses here, they have virtually no flies on them. Hi, Cobra. Cobra's normally gets the worst flies. None today, almost none. Um, Kalia. I was in my feed store today and the products lined up near the very front were fly sprays and bug sprays and terrible insecticides. Big Mama doesn't have any, not even at the corner of her. She's telling Maka not to come into her there. This is where we're dumping the fresh poo right now. It's right here. There's poo everywhere. Why are we not swarming with flies? I'll tell you why. Because of these guys. Because wasps and hornets, yellow jackets are carnivores. And I don't have any kind of proof or data for this, but I believe they are eating the flies and the fly larvae. And we've had massive, we've had a minimum of, you know, 22 to 25 wasp nests here every year. And we live in harmony with them. We have an agreement where they don't sting us and we don't disturb them. We don't smack the wooden supports where their nests are. We, if there's another way we can go in and out so that we can give them a wider berth, we do. Um, so just that awareness and that mutual respect. The energy of hornet and wasp is very aggressive. They are like blackberry. Blackberry and hornets are just so similar. So it's not enough to say, like you can with most animals, to say, okay, well, let's have a relationship like this and let's have a relationship like that. That's not enough to keep wasp from biting me and all my barn workers. So the conversation I had to have with wasp here five years ago was that, and if you do not respect our arrangement and you bite anybody, any humans that are here, I will kill you with very painful insecticide spray that will boil your insides out. And I just sent them pictures of what a horrible, terrible death it is so that they know that's a hard line. You must not. And then the wasp said to me, but what if it's not us? What if it's a wasp from somewhere else who doesn't know about our deal? And I said, well, then it's your responsibility to communicate our deal with them if they're in your property, in, in our space. And they were like, okay, fine. So in five years, in spite of having 20 to 30 wasp nests and very active wasp colonies here, not one single person has been bitten. Now, this year, and I don't know how many of you can feel the chaos swirling around this planet at this time. I would imagine quite a few of you. The energy of these hives is very much a swarming, swirling energy. So this year, only two people have been stung with these massive colonies here. Both of them were, were not even going near the hornets, but they were two people who really needed help with boundaries. And they had poor <laughs> macaw farts. Is that an amen? Can I get an amen? very poor bound, healthy boundaries, right? Um, so sure, they could do anger and they could do um, cold shoulder and they could do, but in terms of setting a healthy boundary, neither of these people had mastered that yet. And um, their lives are really suffering because of it. And so in both cases, 
when, when Hornet stung them, I said, close your eyes, receive the energy of Hornet wasp, pull it into your body. And where does it need to go to help you with your boundary setting and your tenacity? Because these are, in my opinion, the top gifts of wasp and hornet. And so they both did. They closed their eyes, they pulled it in, and Odie, big mama there, had already gotten me to get some mud uh, clay from the creek for a remedy that she wanted for her udder. And so I had it on hand in the tack room and I said, oh yes, let me grab the clay. And I put it on their bites and after they had pulled the energy through and received it, the bites immediately stopped stinging or hurting or anything, just instantly neutralized. So again, even when an animal like this gives you a message, you don't necessarily need to suffer if you are willing to become conscious and present and receive the message and receive the medicine. So Maka just came up to show me this hornet that's been crawling all over his neck. And he's not worried. And so that is the mutual benefit that exists if we can align with the chaos, respect their boundaries and what they require to establish their, their massive colonies <laughs> and live in harmony. And if we are willing to open to this, they will help us, they will show us. The animal kingdom is always reaching out to us from its tiniest member to its largest member. They are always there to help and assist us. We just need to set our intention and open to learning and being guided. Sadie, you're pretty fierce, aren't you? Yeah, you've got some yellow jacket energy in you, don't you? <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, and you're saying that's a good thing. We need beings with this kind of energy on this planet. We need everybody to be who they are, and we just need to be willing to align in together. We're creating a wasp watering hole. Oh, hi now. Perfect. So they can perch on there and they can drink their water. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, you guys, do you hear that? <laughs> so don't be mad at us because we've emptied out these dirty water troughs and scrubbed them. You have water in here. So the hornets wanted to tell me one more thing to tell you guys is uh, about how they dive bomb us. <laughs> so if we're standing where they don't want us to be or they had a period of a few days where they were uh i don't even know i haven't even studied hornet and wasp behavior to be honest but my sense is that they were impregnating their queen whatever that is and so they really didn't want us around and their energy was super super frantic and wound up and so they would dive bomb us. So they would come from up there and they would like a freaking missile, arrow down and smack us in the head or the neck, but they would not bite. So I don't know if the rear end that they use for stinging, they can just turn it into kind of a little cattle prod, like a whack, but that's what they would do to get our attention to say, hey, you're not, you're not respecting our boundaries. You're not respecting what we need. You're not respecting uh, the space that we're in right now and adjusting accordingly and wake up. That's your warning. And if, you know, of course we stop and, you know, tune in and say, okay, well, where is your boundary? How much space do you need? Because I need to do this. I need to clear this manure here, or I need to fill this feeder here. 
and then we would negotiate um, where we could stand and where we couldn't stand. And we actually ended up moving a feeder because they said, there's just no way uh, it's gonna be a week or more. So we thought, okay, well, we'll just move the feeder. And while we were moving the feeder, they didn't attack us or sting us or anything because we were in dialogue and we were listening and we were respecting what they needed to thrive. And here's Posa meditating right underneath one of the active wasp nests. in her peace and her groundedness they are totally happy to share space with her and you can see there's some flies on her we're not fly free here by any means but that's not the purpose either flies have a role to play flies have a benefit to the ecosystem and to all of us creatures here so the hornets are not getting rid of every single fly, but that number of flies is no problem at all to the horses or to us humans or to anyone because their numbers are in balance. I will leave you with that. Thank you, yellow jacket, wasp, hornet. Thank you, insect kingdom. Thank you, birds. And of course, the singing horse heard. Mm -hmm.